In our survey of languages, I only spoke of the most popular languages, and that only includes languages which are imperative with or without some degree of object-orientedness. There are languages, however, which favor the functional paradigm. I only mentioned two. The two Lisp dialects, Scheme and Closure, are both functional. Those are both dynamic functional languages, but there are some static functional languages, including Haskell, Scala, ML, and f -sharp. Of these, ML is the oldest, and though it's barely used at all anymore, it was heavily influential, and in fact, Haskell strongly takes after ML, and f -sharp is actually considered a dialect of ML. As the name implies, f -sharp is related to c -sharp in that it also was created by Microsoft, and it runs on the CLR. None of these languages are really widely used, but they do have their adherents, so you will see them mentioned frequently. Another language, Prolog, belongs to an entirely separate paradigm, which we didn't even mention, called logic programming. To give you an idea of how unpopular logic programming is, Prolog is the only logic programming language anyone's ever heard of, and it itself has hardly ever been used outside of academia. A shell language is any language which runs as a command prompt. That is, it runs interactively, the user types one line, they hit enter, and then that line is executed. While shell languages do typically include things like control flow functions, variables, the stuff that makes up a general purpose programming language, the syntax and semantics of shell languages are heavily weighted towards allowing the user to type the name of a program and having it run. On Windows machines, there's really just one shell language available, and it's called the Windows Shell. On Unix systems, however, there's a wide variety of shells, though the most common one and the default on most Unix systems is called Bash. Though shell languages are oriented around interactively entering code line by line, it is possible to write a file of code and then have the shell execute all the lines of that file. Such a file is called a shell script. The term script in programming has come to mean very high-level code, code in which most of the real work is being farmed out either to other functions or to other programs even. The program is a script in the sense that it's giving high-level directions, but then the real work is being done by all of the actors. You'll often then hear some languages described as scripting languages. Perl and Python, for instance, became popular alternatives to writing shell scripts, so many people thought of them as scripting languages. Since the early 90s, though, Perl, Python, and other dynamic languages have come to be used more and more in the writing of complete programs rather than just small scripts. So while some people are in the habit of calling any dynamic language a scripting language, in truth, it's kind of an outmoded term. So far, every language I've described is a general purpose programming language. That is, in principle with these languages, you can do anything. This even includes shell languages like Bash, even though you're not going to write, say, a game in Bash. It does have variables, control flow, and functions, so in that sense it is a complete programming language. In contrast, what are sometimes called data languages are not programming languages at all, even though they are heavily used by programmers. Web pages, for instance, are ultimately documents written in text expressed in the data language called HTML. XML is another data language it's pretty much just a standard syntax for representing hierarchical data in textual form. By using this common syntax, programmers can save themselves a lot of headaches and effort because it means they can use libraries to handle the grunt work of reading and writing their data. A query language is used to make requests of a database. A database, as we'll discuss later, is basically a program for storing and organizing large quantities of data. When we write a program that needs to deal with a lot of data, most of the time it makes sense to farm this job out to a database, and so our program needs to communicate with the database, and the way it does so is using a query language like SQL, SQL, which stands for Structured Query Language. A domain-specific language is the opposite of a general-purpose language. It's a language designed to solve one particular problem in some specific domain. This can be used as a blanket term to cover basically anything which isn't primarily meant to be a general purpose programming language. So SQL, HTML, and XML would all be examples of domain-specific languages. Some people might also count shell languages as domain-specific because they tend not to be any good at general programming tasks. Finally, a graphical language is any language where the code is not expressed as text, but rather as graphics or something visual, either wholly or in part. 
There aren't many examples of graphical languages, or at least those examples which do exist often aren't recognized as languages at all. For instance, there are systems, programs, which allow you to create a graphical user interface for your program visually rather than having to write uh, all the code by hand. These GUI builders, as they are called, uh, usually uh, generate from the visual representation uh, actual code in some other programming language like, say, Java. But the graphical representation itself is a kind of language. I can think of only one example of a general purpose programming language which is graphical in nature, and it's only partly graphical. The code is still partly composed of text. This language is called Scratch, and it's meant just as an educational tool. It's used as an introduction for young people to programming. Aside from this example, there's no other case of successfully creating a graphical programming language, most likely because it's probably just not a very good idea. It sounds very appealing to get away from having to program in just boring text, but very quickly you find that the idea has all sorts of problems and it just doesn't pan out.